In Ukraine, the relentless onslaught for control of Mariupol rages on. A presidential aide says they are being attacked by Russian forces at a massive steelworks where Ukraine's fighters are besieged, fearing the worst. And in Odessa, they say a Russian missile attack killed five people, including a three-month-old baby. Boris Johnson spoke with President Zelensky today, promising more military aid. Also tonight, cooking oil is rationed in some supermarkets here. The supplies are hit by the war in Ukraine. Good evening. The vital Ukrainian port of Mariupol appears to have been under fierce attack today. A presidential aide said Russian forces are attacking a huge steel plant that is the last stronghold of the Ukrainian forces there. But it is also where many women and children are believed to be hiding. In Odessa, another important site for Russia, they say five people have been killed, including a baby in a missile attack. Boris Johnson had further talks with President Zelensky on the phone today and promised more defensive military aid, including protected vehicles, drones and anti-tank weapons. From Ukraine, Peter Smith reports. From above, there is a sense of scale for what's happened to the port city of Mariupol. Smoke is everywhere. A relentless bombardment, day after day, for eight weeks now. If this place is starting to resemble Aleppo, it's because these are tactics Putin's troops learned in Syria. Besiege and destroy. Ukraine's Azov Battalion just released this video, we believe filmed two days ago, showing the civilians in the bunkers of the Azovstal factory. Children play on their phones. We can go on, they say, but we want to go home. We want to see the sun again. These women are asked how long they've been down here. Since the 5th of March is the reply. The Russians surround the factory outside. This announcement says safe passage is guaranteed to those who surrender. But Ukraine said today Putin's troops tried to storm the place while sending in airstrikes. They have now resumed airstrikes on the territory of the factory and are now launching an assault. Our defenders are holding on and, despite a very difficult situation, are managing to counterattack. Just outside Mariupol, new satellite images appear to show a second mass grave being made during Russia's occupation. The Kremlin has denied trying to cover up the slaughter of civilians. But the casualties continue to increase as phase two of the Russian invasion intensifies. Five have now been confirmed killed in the bombing of Odessa today, including a three-month-old baby. Russia had already confirmed their intent to attack Odessa on their way to Moldova, where they would liberate the Russian speakers of Transnistria. This attack on the port city today would be step one of an invasion that goes beyond Ukraine's borders. Tomorrow it is Easter for Orthodox Christians. Putin says there will be no ceasefire. A holy day, scarred like so much in this war. Peter Smith, ITV News, Kyiv. Our global security editor, Rohit Katru, joins us now from Dnipro. Rohit, what's the significance of today's fighting and what does it tell us about Russia's broader strategy now? Well, we're in the middle of the Orthodox Easter weekend. Uh, new nighttime curfews in place in some places. People are being told not to attend church services, but to watch it on TV uh, instead. So, yes, timing is important in terms of the nature of the fear here. But it goes much broader than that. It's important in the sense of telling us where the Russians believe they are now with this second phase of this war uh, and where in terms of locations uh, uh, too. You know, the common thinking is that attacking forces need to outnumber defending forces roughly three to one. Uh, the Russians don't appear to be in that position yet, according to several uh, sources. But their attack in Odessa gives us a sense of where they believe this next phase are going, going. But it tells us several things and them several things as well. Look, not just at the cruise missile strikes that hit, but the two that were intercepted. We can see that the city of Odessa has been heavily fortified, uh, perhaps not only by the Ukrainians, but by some of their allies as well. 
Cooking oil is being rationed in some supermarkets, an unexpected consequence of the war in Ukraine. Most of the UK's sunflower oil comes from Ukraine and Russia, but imports to the UK are now drying up, pushing up prices and putting yet more pressure on the cost of living crisis. Today, Tesco joined Morrisons and Waitrose to become the latest supermarket to introduce limits for customers. Live now to Neil Connery. Uh, Neil, what does this all mean then? Well, Duncan, as you say, Tesco, the latest supermarket in the UK to be affected by this. It's uh, today put in this uh, restriction so that its shoppers can only buy three bottles uh, of cooking oil. It follows on from Waitrose and Morrisons, who have uh, limits on their shoppers of just two bottles. Uh, Sainsbury's and Asda at the moment are not currently limiting any of their supplies. The British Retail Consortium has described all of this as just temporary measures. I think the key message tonight is that there is uh, no need for panic buying, as we know a lot of this sunflower oil comes to the UK from Ukraine. The war has clearly had an effect on exports. The price of sunflower oil on sale in the UK has increased by around 10% since January. Uh, and UK food manufacturers who use this to make things like crisps and oven uh, chips as well, they have expressed their concerns about what is happening. A major financial donor of the private hospital in Marylebone used by the Queen has been put on the UK list of sanctioned Russian oligarchs. Vyacheslav Kantor, whose name is still above a door at the King Edward VII Hospital, faces sanctions over Ukraine. The hospital is where the Queen has gone for medical care, including a night's stay last autumn. 